Witamy Was serdecznie w Forfan TV. Tym razem Oliwia Adams ponownie Cześć. u nas. Drugi raz. I jesteśmy i widzimy się z nią w związku z premierą singla Fool Me Once. O nim sobie oczywiście porozmawiamy, ale nie tylko. So again, cześć Olivia. You, you said Drugera, what, what is this? Like the, your second meeting here, like your second visit. I thought you were telling people that I'm drugged, that I came drugged here. And I was like, what? what A drugie, no! Yeah, I was like, what is he talking about, people? How are you? I'm not. I'm not using, no. No. Never. I'm, no, I'm some I'm the kind of uh, kid who like uh, stayed in school the whole time and was uh, all, always uh, home at 9 p.m. or something like that. Really? I'm pretty boring, yeah. Like even when you were like 15, 16 years old. Especially then. Yeah, I didn't have any like I had friends, but my friends were going like to the movies or playing board games or I don't know, reading books. You 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 could find me in the library or something like that. I was like pretty pretty boring. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. Wow! I was never actually, because my parents gave me a lot of uh, freedom and they were like, uh, we trust you to that you can take care of yourself. So I didn't really feel the need to uh, get their attention and I was feeling pretty guilty if they would give me freedom and I would do something shitty because it was like, it was like um, so we gave you freedom and you <laughs> shit on us practically. <laughs> and that's why I, I was always so nice. <laughs> wow, that's that's actually like a great review for uh, for parenthood, how to yeah. raise a good child. Yeah, but give them freedom and attention because if you only give them freedom, then they, 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 then they understand that you don't really care about them. So you have to give them attention too. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And it's a, it's a very good thought and, and truthful. So you were never like a trouble student or pupil at school? like. No, no. Like uh, the, the things that I did, um, I, I traveled a lot with a choir because I was in a choir and I, I, I traveled a lot and I had a lot of, um, I don't know how you say, but when you're not going to school, when you're not present in a classroom, the teacher is like uh, putting you a dot that you are. Yeah, in Polish it's vagare. Dvagare. Yeah. And I had a lot of dvagare, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, somehow I passed. Okay. So yeah, that was it. That was probably because of the library time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were just smart. I was so such a sweetheart that all the teachers loved me. <laughs> okay, wow, that's amazing. But um, so have you done like anything bad in your life? Anything bad? Um... Because we were talking before the interview that you, you, you can be rude sometimes <laughs> in just special conditions. So I wonder how does it look when you're rude? I I try so hard not to be rude because uh, I don't want to be that. I don't want people to say like, uh, oh my God, she's so arrogant and now she's a, like a superstar and she doesn't know how to be, how to have manners anymore. So I always try to be super kind and super thoughtful. And when somebody is getting on my nerves, I'm like, Olivia, try to understand their point of view. Maybe they're also hungry and tired and, and they're only humans and you are only human and everybody's only human. So let's get uh, all happy and uh, like drink and <laughs> forget <laughs> about it. Wow, that's hard. I try, I try. I didn't say it works every time. Most of the time I'm just crying myself to, to, to pass the, like I cry a lot. That's how I, I, how I handle things. If something bothers me, I cry 10 minutes and then I'm, okay, Okay, back to work. <laughs> yeah, because it's like a lot of tension, I think, and, and pressure on you and like... There's no pressure. That's what I talked about also yesterday. Uh, nobody's putting putting pressure on me. I'm the only one who's putting pressure on me. Uh, so, yeah, I stopped doing that. Because <laughs> okay. it's like... So, do you actually explode sometimes? Or you just hide and cry and just try to just... I don't explode in public. Okay. And I... Oh, i always wished I could be that type of person that goes home and likes, or when she's super angry, um, I don't know, breaks her phone or the or some, I don't know how how, how plates the plates to to go home and feel super nervous and like be like, oh my god, this I hate this and I, but I can't. I'm like, but the plates and the phone, the phone is expensive. How can I break my phone? <laughs> but I know that some people when they're super angry, they throw their their phone on the wall, and I'm like. How can you do that? That's so not thoughtful. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm, I'm the, exactly the same person. Like, I rarely explode, like, almost never, and never break things and anything. Like, you you think about things, about the I start to tremble. I start to tremble. I'm like, okay, that, 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 that's fine. That's not fine. And then I cry, and then I'm like, uh, okay, wow. again. Yeah. Wow. Like, it's... 
It's so you're a very reasonable, logical person, actually. I am actually so not artistic. I always said I'm, I'm such so not an artist because I don't have like this, this dramatic life. And I'm like, uh, I, I don't know, like super dramatic, you know, I'm so I'm like, I went to school, I did my job, I was, uh, I, don't, I wasn't good at math, I'm sorry, but I was good with analytic and stuff like that, like economics and uh, stuff like that, so yeah. What are you doing here? I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, just looking cute with the background. Yeah, and actually you have a colorful uh, outfit. Like. It was especially for you, I did it especially for you, for the, the cute uh, background. Yeah. yeah. Actually, my stylist thought about it. She was like, uh, show me, show me a photo of the place and Ooh, purple, then let's dress you purple too. Great, thank yeah. you. We, we really appreciate that. It's flattering. Don't mention it. We should talk about your music as well. Oh yeah, music. Because yeah. you just published uh, like Fool Me Once single. Fool me once, you, that's okay because I never knew. Yeah. So, how do you feel about it and like we will talk more about your music because I want to just um, continue the subject from our first conversation. So just tell me about the single and how do you feel about it? Um, I feel good about it. It's my single. <laughs> so, no, sorry. Uh, I like it. Uh, I like it very much. I, it's not a personal story because everybody keeps uh, asking me, is it your personal story? Did you get shit on? No, I didn't get shit on, but... Uh, <laughs> um, it is a personal story, but not, not my personal story. So, like, uh, I, I love, like, going out with friends and talking and gossiping and about this and that. And I recently let myself get inspired of this moment because somebody, a, a songwriter, told me uh, one time, if you listen carefully, uh, people will tell you, will always tell you in a conversation a, a song title. I'm not profiting from them. I'm also listening and giving them advice and being a good friend. But I'm also listening to their stories and thinking I could give them a voice somehow. Wow. Yeah, I think it's uh, pretty cool. That's amazing. You could be like a superstar therapist, actually. Superstar therapist, yeah. yeah. That could be the title of your song. Yeah, cool, <laughs> cool. Yeah. So about your music, last time when you've been here, you, we were talking like about the beginning of your career and that actually it like started to grow during the pandemic. So you didn't experience a concert once. Oh my God, you remember. Yeah, yeah. And so now I, I have. Yeah. Now I have and it's amazing. And it was exactly the point, the turning point where I said totally worth being an artist like because I, I had lots of uh, steps when, when I said maybe maybe I should go back to work because I I worked in the I worked in a corporation and I went a lot to school so my analytical mind stayed here like and it, it I tried to make um, a balance with the artistic vibe uh, and but there were a, a lot of times when I felt like I also have this imposter syndrome and I always uh, felt like uh, I don't belong here. I uh, I just got lucky. I'm not good enough. There are there are people which are so much better than me and I always said that to myself. But when the concert start start uh, started uh, and I went and I uh, and I saw how many people are coming to the concerts and how happy they are to see me and how they are singing my songs. It was such uh, an amazing feeling and I couldn't compare it to anything else. Like I was so happy for like, I don't know, two or three days because of a concert and, and then went back to depression. No, I'm kidding. But I was super happy when, when this happened and I said, maybe I can do this. Like may, maybe I'm good, not good at it, but I really enjoy it. So I, it was like, I think the first time when I felt like maybe I belong in this world. Wow. That, yeah. That's great. It was unexpected because I was so scared of concerts because I was like, mm, I, I don't have enough to give to the people, like enough energy, enough, uh, the imposter syndrome. Uh, I think you have. Yeah. Yeah. But when I went on, st on stage, I transformed to another person and I gave them everything and they gave me everything back. So it was like a super sweet exchange of 
of energy and good vibes and it left me totally like I I got off stage and then I stayed for like two hours and a half to take photos with everybody who was there just because I enjoyed it and because I wanted to to meet everybody and to hug them because I was waiting for like three years already to do that to be able to do that so it was pretty special wonderful like people always um, appreciate when you just give this time of yours to them. It was amazing and and for them to stay in line for so such a long time just to take a photo and to tell me like uh, you're doing a great job I love you I support you I was like thank right. you like I, I, I'm super super forever grateful for for this uh, stuff. So actually I have a question that could be connected to, to these experience because one of our viewers, Rzecznie um, Pospolita, uh, is asking where do you see yourself in five years? You're, you're the second person in two days to ask me this and the first one was not a reporter or something, it was a friend. It was like, where do you see yourself in five years? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so you are still not so sure with your musical career, even though... I know I want to I wa I know I want to make music, I know I want to be great, I know I want to advance in my career, I don't want to stop here, I want to be better and better every day because I'm a Virgo and I'm, I want to be professional and be better and better and to learn from every experience and to see how I can make it better the next time. But uh, in five years from now, I don't know, I can't say that in five years from now I'm going to win a Grammy. Uh, although, <laughs> yeah, I know it's your... yeah, but I don't want to uh, set up a goal like this and then be disappointed if it didn't happen in five years and then be like, um, not, not acknowledge all the good stuff that happened in five years just because I didn't get a Grammy. Because, for, uh, for example, last year I wanted super bad to go to a festival, like to sing on a festival, on a big festival in Romania. And I couldn't, I didn't. I don't know why, but I didn't. And last year I did so so amazing stuff. Like I was a host for a, for a TV show on HBO. Like uh, amazing stuff happened last year. And I was so sad I wasn't on the festival. And I was like, bitch, yeah. <laughs> you did so, such amazing stuff. <laughs> Be grateful for that and stop stop putting goals in it like for this summer. Because I, I, I thought I'm going to have some projects for this summer. And then uh, I, I learned that they were moved for the next year. And I was like, okay, so this summer I don't have any plans. And for the moment I said, okay, weird. And I said, Okay, interesting. Let's see what happens. Like, it's cool. I love the let's see what happens because it always, always, always something good happens. Yeah, that's true. And I think that's the only healthy attitude you, you can have in this industry because it's so parabolic and it's sometimes like you don't know what could, could happen. Like you can be at the top and then be at the bottom and then again be at the top. Also, when you're at the top, um... It's like, uh, I did a comparison yesterday, it's like you're, in, you're playing Sims and you have the money password, you know? And then you introduce it and then you have uh, endless money and you do the house of your dreams, you buy the most expensive stuff and then once the house is ready, you're bored and you close the game because what's more to do? Because you, you have money, you have everything, you can do everything. You play for like 20 minutes, you, I don't know, you put them in the pool and then take the <laughs> ladder out or <laughs> close the doors and then that's it. So, yeah, I don't want to have the money password on Sims. I just want to enjoy and struggle and have fun and cry and I don't know, I think it's more cool. Yeah, and more important. Beautiful. Yeah. So. I wish you that you will never end the game and lose the passion. So yeah. just keep going. And that, that's why I'm also so chill right now because I don't want to. Because there are many moments we, which are not so cool, and I don't want to lose the passion. I don't want to uh, forget why I started to sing, why I started to to write music or stuff like that. I don't want to forget that. I I still want to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm not putting any pressure on me anymore, and I'm just chill like. Yeah, maybe I make a couple mistakes, maybe, I don't know, maybe I have a bad day, maybe somebody says something shitty about me or I get some hate, but that's okay. <laughs> right. Like, it's fine. Amazing. Like, I, I think it, it will cause you, like, a lot of good just to, to be like that. And to... Maybe, maybe not. We will see. Yeah. Okay, and I hope we will see each other soon again. At the party okay. where I was not yeah. invited, on the beach, because I'm not an A-list. <laughs> uh, 
I'll try to do something about it. <laughs> okay, Olivia Adams z nami dzisiaj w Forfan TV. Bardzo Ci dziękujemy. Dziękuję. Forfan TV. Najwięcej muzyki.